Welcome in Matt McKinney. Matt has filed to run for office in Jefferson County for the Jefferson County Commission. He is currently on the Republican Executive Committee in Jefferson County. Matt, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Have you run for office before, Matt? I have not. How long have you been a member of the Executive Committee in Jefferson County? I have been on the Executive Committee since 2019. 2019. Okay, well, you had your, your timing uh, was certainly very interesting over the last uh, year or so because you folks had a bit of an adventure with the attempt to uh, place a new commissioner after Claire Ath had left. Uh, tell me about that process and how you came through all that okay. Um, as you mentioned, Claire Ath resigned in late May of 2023. Um, there was a period to apply to the county commission directly. Um, that period went through uh there was actually two nominees for the from the county commission to be appointed i was one of them isabel simon was one of them uh it was deadlocked with a 2-2 vote um after that the executive committee had a uh, you know, we had an open meeting to discuss the process on how we were going to do that uh how we were going to fill these uh nominations um and then we had another meeting to do interviews, and then we had a third meeting to do a uh, runoff style election, which was the process for that was spelled out by the uh, state bylaws committee. Mm -hmm. um, and then from then we sent uh, sent the names to the county commission, and then it took a little while, but we now have a uh, we now have a seated commissioner, and it seems that county business is moving back moving forward a little better than they were as a member of the executive committee were you surprised that this became an issue uh from any other vacancies that i've seen in the past it's usually not so contentious generally pretty smooth sailing why have you decided to run for this office at this time um i care for jefferson county i'm born and raised in jefferson county and product a uh, product of jefferson county schools um i have two children to raise that I want them to have opportunity in Jefferson County as well. Uh, my son's seven, my daughter's four. Jefferson County has been good to me. I operate a business there uh, called Cody Salvage. Uh, we're right around the Middleway area. We run your commercials. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's as as we've stated, there's been some contention and there's been some disorder within the county commission. And it's, uh, it's time to get the county moving forward in the right direction again. Matt, in regards to the approach to attracting business in Jefferson County, uh, do you think at this time that Jefferson County's image has been harmed when it comes to attracting business to Jefferson County? Or do you think it's been enhanced to the point where you are an attractive destination? I suppose it depends on the kind of business that we're considering. Um, as you know, there's sometimes, especially as far as manufacturing and things of that nature, um, there that can be a, a source of some differing opinions. Um, really, with our as far as moving business forward in Jefferson County, right now is kind of a um, I'm not going to say it's a crossroads, but we're we're doing our comprehensive plan mm -hmm. it has to be redone every 10 years uh the zoning map that we come up with and then the comprehensive plan that we come up with that's going to be you know that's the guideline to how we develop in the future um so that's i encourage anybody to take part in those discussions there's been four open meetings so far that i know of um and any jefferson county member i suggest come in throw your input in on that bill yeah good morning matt uh the upcoming uh, uh, race, there are actually two two slots open on the county commission. One is for the full six-year term, which you're one of three candidates running for. Then there's the unexpired term of uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Alt, uh, of which Pasha is sitting in that seat now. But I see that he's not running for the full unexpired term. He actually does not live in that district. He is in Harper's Ferry District. So he would not be able, he would not be eligible to run okay. for it. So once this elections, uh, once we have the election starting one January, he will not be in office. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, uh, uh, so the actually there's four running for the unexpired term. How much time is left on that unexpired term? Do you know? 
Uh, four years, I believe. Four years. So, yes, sir. So uh, three of you running for a full six years, then four, four running for a four-year term. Uh, what do you, uh, uh, you've had a chance to look up close and personal, uh, and certainly the commission has, in Jefferson County, has had some, some points of friction the last time, but from far looking in, there's always been some points of friction within Jefferson County Commission. Uh, I don't know why that is, but compared to Berkeley County, it always appears to be more turbulent. Uh, what do you say is the main issue in Jefferson County right now that you as a uh, as a commissioner would address? Um, well, you have to be open to working together. You know, the points of friction can be good or bad depending on how you look at them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm an advocate for robust debate on issues. Um, you know, it's an opportunity to to really hear different perspectives from individuals. And, and you know, I think that Jefferson County needs to – needs to get back on track to doing the people's work and instead of maybe some things that that are, are more of a personal kind of let me go to a more pointed question and picking up on what rob asked a couple of minutes ago about business and the uh, business growth uh, economic growth in jefferson county uh there is again the long history of a lot of folks saying we want the county to remain exactly what it is there's another group that says we need to have economic growth recently there have been two companies or two groups that have come in that caused a lot of dissension rockwall is one that got a lot of publicity and now more recently the, the solar farms uh you have kind of both ends of, of the spectrum. One's uh, uh, manufacturing, the other one's just kind of a passive uh, uh, draw of business of drawing on the solar. Uh, the fact that there's so much resistance on both of these, it does send a message, does it not, that business is not really welcome. We may be tolerated, but not new business may be tolerated, but not welcome. Or am I reading that wrong? Uh, that could very well be a perception of, of some investors. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think that there's always a a chilling effect that's going to last forever. Um, and I think that we need to continue to open the dialogue up with our community to find out what you know what people are looking for. And with that being said, you know we are we are a county with zoning. We have a zoning ordinance and our comprehensive plan. You know those are guidelines to to growth and it sometimes is misconstrued that that is a police force to to police individuals property rights so that's not necessarily the case um so i think that we just need to work work together and work transparently to uh you know bring in the the type of industries that individuals find acceptable but now both the rock wall and the solar falls well within your zoning guidelines this is true um and especially you know rock wall has operated for several years now from what i can tell they've been a good you know they've been a good neighbor to the community um zoning or well the solar farms you know me personally i'd like to see cows rolling the fields you know <laughs> but the the solar ordinance has been affirmed by this county commission and was implemented by the makeup of the previous three county commissions. Um, it's been in the press since 2020. It's not a new, you know, it's not a new thing. You are starting to see, you're seeing the construction of it right now, which is getting people's attention. Um, the vegetation, you know, the landscape bufferings haven't necessarily grown up quite the way, you know, to where you don't see it. Um, but give it a little bit of time, and sure. you know, I think that it will be. Th there's there's some drawbacks, and there's some benefits for sure. John Gilstrap, <clears throat> I'm not a Jefferson County resident. I'm a Berkeley County resident, but in driving through Jefferson County, well, you, you do have a Shepherdstown address. I do have a Shepherdstown address. I'm 800 yards into Berkeley County, which an extraordinary number of complications come from that. <laughs> but anyway, but we have you back. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> um, I see a lot of clear cutting for dozens or hundreds of homes being built in Jefferson County. Is that part, is that a favorable part of the plan to you? This, it looks to me and well, new construction never looks particularly attractive. So projecting out 10 years, maybe it'd be pretty, but right now I'm seeing a lot of new people 
which puts a lot of stress on roads and on schools and everything else. What is the plan there in terms of residential construction? Well, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, we are always welcoming new people on the side of the line. So if you'd like to come over and no, I'm good. Us, please do. <laughs> I'm good. Just uh, built the house. I ain't not moving it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, you're right. That's a valid point is that generally these these kinds of developments is a draw on the tax base. You know, they're the new residents are the ones that are using schools, using the roads, using the fire and EMS and things like that. Um, and we do need to we do need to take the business interests that are there. Um, as it is right now, you know, there's some ongoing projects um, such as the Hilltop House, you know, that's that's been started, hasn't quite gotten through yet, hasn't quite gotten across the finish line. Uh, but as of right now, that's an abandoned building more or less. You know, it is a historical landmark, but it's, it is... It's pretty far away from the finish line, isn't it? It is, but we could we could move to expedite this and start having start to generate some tax revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the same with these solar farms. You know, they're going to be paying taxes, and especially when we're discussing. You know, there's a discussion for a fire levy in Jefferson County right now, and you know, if we're not taking the tax revenue that's available to us, and then we're going to the community and tell them that we need to raise their taxes, well, you know, that that doesn't add up to me. So your proposal would be to what? To, one, the businesses that are looking to locate here, um, we should do the best that we can to, you know, I mean, you don't want to change rules for anybody by any means, but to facilitate a smooth process to get them to get them up and going if they're looking to locate here. But that's the point I was making a while ago. The most recent examples, Jefferson County has not done that. Jefferson County has not extended the welcome mat. In fact, Jefferson County has done just the opposite. We we want business, we want to grow, but we don't want your business to grow. I think that's something that, yeah. that does need to be addressed, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Matt addressed that earlier as to the specific type of business that might be more welcome in Jefferson County. And, and Matt, what, as you read the tea leaves, would those businesses be described as? Um, well, a short answer would be West Virginia – they bring in about, um, I believe it's about $800 million per annum of tourism revenue. Of that $800 million, $200 million of it comes from Jefferson County. Um, that seems to be a use that most people can agree with. And I think that's the route that we should go as far as planning. And we should also utilize the, the departments and the things that we have, the resources that we have available to us. Uh, we have a Jefferson County Development Authority um you know the director of that's very capable you know i think that we need to to work with her work with them as far as what their ideas are you know we also need to work with region nine that's essentially what they're what they're doing is is doing planning for the whole eastern panhandle um and then we really need to we really need to be involved in our in our comprehensive plan and the updates to the zoning maps because if it says the only thing that you can build is houses then well, that kind of limits what you can do as far as business. Matt McKinney is our guest. He's a candidate for Jefferson County Commission out of the Middleway District and currently serves on the Jefferson County Executive Committee. Uh, in regards to your business, Matt, tell me from your experiences uh, what, if anything, can the county or state do? to further help small businesses in Jefferson County? Well, when I speak to, when I speak to people in the community, I've actually asked some people that have businesses in Berkeley and in Jefferson County. And I said, what's, you know, what's the biggest difference and which one do you prefer to do business in? And I got a, I got a response that said in, in Jefferson County, the taxes are almost prohibitable. Well, that, you know, that alone is, that's a big deal. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that some, you know, if there's incentives that we could do to maybe defer taxes for a year for, for smart up, for startup businesses that they can pay back once they have some cash flow going um, in the zoning ordinance and our comprehensive plan as it currently states, we do, we do encourage some commerce in the, in the rural district as long as it's of the same scale intensity and doesn't hurt or affect the public health safety or welfare um, we need to to be more encouraging of those kinds of uses in the county for people that do want to use their 
use their home for for business as well. You have you've had impact fees in Jefferson County for quite a while. Uh, what is the limited? What is how are these been utilized by the county? Um, well, impact fees go to capital improvements, um, but include schools. I think is that that, do, that does include schools. Yeah. Um, our impact fee was lowered a couple of years ago, and a less of a portion goes to schools. Um, but from again, you know, it's for infrastructure and capital yes. improvements. Whereas in Berkeley County, even though we do not call them impact fees, call them uh, commun- uh, improvement fees, uh, that go strictly to the sewer and the water district. In Jefferson County, it's more expanded. You have other uses for it. Yes. Yeah. Matt, my colleague, Mr. Gilstrap, is a former firefighter, EMS uh, as well. And uh, my question to you is, I know there was a thorough review conducted in Jefferson County recently in regard to fire departments, response, EMS, and such. Were you happy with the results of that? And are you happy with the implementation of the plan since those studies have been done? I think what you're referring to is the Fitch report, which is more based around EMS generally than fire itself. Mm-hmm. Um the implementation it seemed like it it started off really strong and then some individuals had a change of heart and then it's kind of slowed down and it's the you know the the fine details the legal details are what have been kind of kind of been slow since then although from what i from what i'm seeing the the plan's working Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're still covering the areas. We're still covering the county. Um, you know, I, I, there's been some some discussion from uh, Jefferson County residents uh, about the ambulance not necessarily being parked on the Blue Ridge Mountain, um, which I personally I think that we need to have some kind of economic driver to get a medical facility actually on the mountain um, that does house. 20 to 30 percent of our population um but the way that the the ems system is set up now it goes by where the call volume is um so while ambulances are stationed at independent fire company in branson and then citizens fire company in charlestown if it was on the mountain instead of at citizens fire company well when the independent fire company ambulance goes out then it's got to come sit in town anyway you know the ambulance would have to come and sit down sit in town anyway to be closer to standby um so so far i I think that it's working it needs to be buttoned up um but for the most part i think it's going okay but if i remember the fetch report uh was uh, addressed directly the response time the national standards for response time i think something like seven to eight minutes uh, yet the Fitch report showed that certain sections on the, the mountain would be as much as maybe double that amount, if not triple that amount. Uh, that was one of the real points of alarm, uh, but yet it was, in, I don't think it was ever really addressed. Is it, is it as bad as what it appeared to be in the Fitch report? Um, I, mean, I, I don't discount any of those, any of those mm. concerns. Um, and the mountain... You know, if you if you have something at the top of Eagle's Nest, you know, unless you're stationed somewhere on Eagle's Nest, it's going to take more than eight minutes to yeah, get there. Yeah. You know, it's doing the best with what we can. I mean, what what we need to do is, in order to expand services, we need to increase our, our revenue. You know, and we need to we need to bring in more business to increase our tax base. It's it's not fair to go to every one of our citizens to tell them, well, we need to raise your taxes, especially with inflation as it is now. So, Well, that's, <clears throat> that's long been the trade-off in terms of fire and rescue. I came from Fairfax County before I moved here, where there's a fire station that grew like dandelions. But you've also got 1.2 million people in Fairfax County. So if you, if you want to have the cows and the rural and you know all of the things that brought me, frankly, out to West Virginia from there – the trade-off is that unless you're living next to the fire station, you're just going to have longer response times. And, you know, the, the, that always has some kind of consequence. Frankly, depending on what what the illness is, you know, if it's a heart attack or a stroke, the difference between 7 minutes and 14 minutes probably doesn't matter all that much, you know, because it's a devastating kind of thing if you're bleeding out. Uh, for a broken arm, it, then it doesn't matter either because 
you know, you, you're going to get to the hospital one way or the other. But you're absolutely right. If you're going to have a rural setting, a bucolic setting, then you have to settle for less emergency services because it just doesn't pay for itself. Yeah, it's, it's one or the other, unfortunately. Right. Well, we can we can work to expand the services that we have. Sure. Matt, we've got about a minute left or so, and that minute is yours. What would you like to tell our audience that we haven't had a chance to cover with you yet? Or if you'd like to review anything. Uh, well, my name is Matt McKinney. I've, I'm a uh, Jefferson County resident, have been born and raised there, a product of Jefferson High School. Uh, you know, I operate a family business, um, and I care for our county. Anybody that wants to uh, get a hold of me, I have a website at electmckinney.org. Um, my, fe my Facebook site will be launched soon. Um, and I'm an open line, you know, anybody that wants to discuss their concerns, please reach out to me because I, I want your perspective. And McKinney is M C capital K I N N E Y. That is correct. Yes, right. sir. Matt is the first name. Matt, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Thank G you. Good luck to you in your pursuit of the office, sir. Thank you.